Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to share with you what I consider to be the three critical keys that will assure success when building your first guitar. And actually, these are keys which, even if you've got experience building guitars, you might find useful. So let's get started. The first key is to be realistic. It's really easy to get excited about a build, guitar building project, and we have a tendency to want to try to uh, gather up all these different features that we want to incorporate into what we would call our dream guitar. However, if you're not careful, some of those features may not play well together. For example, uh, let's say you want to uh, equip your guitar with a locking Floyd Rose tremolo. Um, and let's say you want to recess that bridge down into the body of the guitar. Great. I do that all the time. It's my favorite way of, of installing a Floyd Rose. I think it looks streamlined and allows you to achieve super low action and keep everything really close to the body. The problem is, let's say you wanted to put a recessed Floyd Rose onto a guitar body that's really thin, um, sort of a la black machine. So let's say the body's going to be one and three eighths to one and a half inches thick. If you recess a Floyd Rose into a body that thin, the tremolo block is going to probably stick out the back by at least a half an inch. Now, of course, you can fix that by raising the bridge, but then you sort of defeat the whole purpose of recessing it. And then you end up with a bridge that sits so high out of the body, the action is almost unplayable. So that's just one example of how being realistic with regard to all the features that you want to incorporate is extremely important. Another uh, aspect or another example of being realistic is with regards to your tools that you have available and your skill set. You don't want to try to tackle any design that's going to require tools and skills that you may not possess. So you need to consider what you can do and what you can't do based on your skills and the tools you have. And in the end, what I would recommend doing uh, to be realistic is write down all the specifications for the guitar that you want to build and then look at those specifications carefully and decide, is this something that's going to work together and is this something that I can actually pull off? You can even um, send your list to uh, an experienced luthier and ask them if they see any potential red flags. Now, not all luthiers are going to agree to do this because after all, they want to build your guitar. But you may have a design in mind that's just going to be way beyond what you can actually tackle. And a luthier might be able to help you realize that dream. So uh, it's a good idea to have some another set of eyes to check out your, your, your features and make sure that this is actually something that's going to work and then you alone can determine whether or not you can actually pull off those features. The second key to achieving success in building a guitar is to prioritize the steps that you're going to have to follow to do the work. And what that means is you want to actually write down a list of each step of the guitar building process from start to finish. And as you do this, you need to consider each step as it relates to the step before it and then the steps that are going to come after it. And I realize that's fairly complicated and unfortunately there is no tried and true uh, prioritized list of steps that you can download and follow when you build your guitar because every guitar build is going to be a little bit different. In fact, if I was going to ask 10 luthiers to build the exact same guitar, they would probably all follow a very similar list of steps in terms of priority, but there's going to be some variation and a little bit of difference. And this is because every guitar builder has a different skill set and different experiences when it comes to building. And they, they have different philosophies about how they like to proceed. Uh, let me give you an example. One of my philosophies has always been that when you're building um, a guitar, you want to you don't want to build the body first. And a lot of people get really excited about wanting to see that finished body, so they'll dive into that first. Then they'll make a neck or they'll buy a, an existing pre-made neck 
and they'll find that it doesn't fit properly into the body because you need to have that neck in hand so that you can determine things like how deep the neck pocket is going to be and the actual overall shape of the neck pocket. So I always recommend that folks build the neck first, then use that neck and measure the thickness of the heel to determine how deep the pocket needs to be. And then you can actually use the neck heel itself to set up your routing jig for when you route the pocket. Now I know some of you are going to say, well, I'm going to be using a template and that template was made on a CNC machine or it was laser cut. And that's fine, but you have to remember when you make a neck, the act of sanding and carving the final shape is likely going to reduce its overall dimension ever so slightly from what the template dictated. As a result, when you fit that neck into the pocket that you routed on the body, there's a possibility that that neck is going to swim in that pocket. and You may have gaps on either side because it's actually a tiny bit smaller than what was intended. And you may not realize that because when you're sanding, you're not removing that much wood, but all it takes is to remove a 32nd, even a 64th of an inch of wood, and you're no longer going to have that snug fit in your neck pocket. Another example of how prioritizing your steps can be important is when you're trying to decide whether you need to slot a fretboard before you glue it onto a neck or after, or should you shape the neck first, then glue the fretboard on, or you know maybe you should glue the fretboard blank to the neck blank and then just make it all from there. The reason why this is important is I always encourage builders to try to approach the build so that they will make the fewest and the least costly mistakes if and when a mistake happens. So if you're going to glue a fretboard blank to a neck blank and then do all the slotting, cutting, carving, shaping, and sanding, what happens if you make a mistake on one of those steps? If you do, you've lost the entire neck. However, if you make those parts separately and do this by establishing a prioritized list of steps, you can make a fretboard complete separate and then make your neck shaft and headstock complete and separate. Then bring the two together. That way, if you goof one of them up, you've only goofed one of them up. You haven't goofed up the whole thing and have to start over. That's why prioritizing the steps is so important. The final key to success in building a guitar is to visualize each of those steps. So you've got your, your list of steps, and you're pretty confident you have the, the steps listed out in terms of priority. And what you can do now is you can actually visualize how you're going to complete those steps. Because remember, each step actually is going to involve a whole host of sub-steps. And those are important to consider. And think of it this way. Have you ever watched the Olympics and you've seen um, a downhill skier in the start box getting ready to make his run? or maybe a bobsled team that's getting ready to hit the course, they're always visualizing how they're going to do that run. And it looks goofy, but it's highly effective and helps them to prepare for that run. Well, the same can be said about building a guitar. Now, you don't have to close your eyes and imagine yourself moving a router as you're cutting a pocket. But if you think through each and every step and think about it in your mind's eye of what you're going to be doing, you will likely begin to identify some potential problems before they actually become a problem. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're going to route the neck pocket into your guitar body and you're going to use a, a jig which consists of a couple of guide boards that you're going to clamp down to the body so, and while you route that, that pocket. What happens if you've already carved an elaborately shaped carve top? All of a sudden you're faced with an issue of how you're going to clamp that jig to an elaborately shaped carve top. Well, if you had visualized the process 
before doing any work at all, you might have seen that this would become a problem. So what you could do is rearrange your, your uh, prioritized list of steps and maybe routed the pocket before cutting that elaborately shaped contoured top, saving yourself a lot of trouble. That's just one example. And there are many other examples. But if you, if you write down your prioritized list and then really think about how you're going to do each of those steps and visually walk yourself through it, you'll find yourself rearranging your prioritized list a second time in order to um, ensure that the whole build is going to be uh, achieved successfully. So, um, make sure that you visualize those steps and um, I think you'll find that it, it solves a lot of heartache before that heartache ever gets a chance to get started. Well, there you have it. Those are my three keys to achieving success when building a guitar. And I realize they kind of sound a little bit complicated and, and for some they may even seem a little bit too new agey. But I can assure you, if you are honest with yourself and are realistic with the build that you're going to pursue and prioritize all the steps from start to finish and then kind of visualize how you're going to achieve those steps, it's not that difficult to do and you will save yourself so much heartache and you will save time and you will save money and in the end you'll have a guitar you can really be proud of. So uh, until the next episode, uh, be sure to click the like button or the thumbs up button, hit subscribe, click the bell to get notified when new videos are posted and you know I've been doing two a week. And um, if you have any comments or questions, post them in the, uh, the comments below and uh, I always try to do my best to answer those. So until the next episode, take care and we'll see you soon.